I'm Dr. Becky Peebles. I'm a primary care sports medicine doctor at UT Health East Texas. Thanks so much for joining us for the running series. This week, we're gonna be talking about preparing to do a training plan. So hopefully by now you've looked at the six week training plan that we have posted. First thing you need to think about is being intentional. Download that plan if you haven't already and look at your schedule, figure out what works best for you. This training plan only has three days a week where you're actually doing the training. The other days are active recovery or rest. So whatever days work best for you, pick those days and make sure that you have it written into your schedule. Think about the time of day that's gonna work best for you also. On Sundays, you'll notice the training plan has rest and prepare for the week. You will do so much better if you have an idea of what you're gonna wear for your runs, if you know when they're gonna be. So make sure that you're taking that time to not only get ready for your running, but also prep your food, do your meal plans for the week, go grocery shopping, all of those things that are gonna help you succeed with everything during the week. Part of preparation is also thinking about making sure that you're ready to start this plan. If you have any chronic medical conditions, especially if they're heart conditions, make sure that you're touching base with your doctor before you start. That could be your primary care physician or if you have a cardiologist, always a good idea to check with them. If you don't have a physician, feel free to come see me in my clinic and we can chat about making sure that you're medically ready to start the program. Another really key piece of this is to make sure that you're dressed appropriately. Part of that is we're training during the winter, so we want to make sure that you have adequate gear, but the other part is preventing injuries. Let's talk about shoes first, one of my favorite topics. Shoes can be really fun, but they're also a really key piece in walking or running if you're training. Your shoes don't need to be brand new, but you do need to have a fairly new pair of shoes. If you can have shoes that are no older than six months, it's probably going to do better. We don't know exactly how long it takes for the EVA foam on the bottom of a shoe to break down, but we do know that it breaks down with time. If you do a lot of running and training, depending on the shoe that you're wearing, they need to be replaced sometimes as few as 300 to 500 miles. So it's a good idea to have an idea of how much mileage you've put on your shoes. Now, the perfect shoe for your foot, that's kind of a gamble. Everybody's a little bit different in what they like and what works for them. So a couple key points that are true for everybody. Make sure your shoe has a wide enough toe box. You don't want your foot to be squished in the front of your shoe because that's gonna to lead to potential for injuries, but also just discomfort while you're running. Another thing that's really important is making sure that your shoes are long enough. In general, for walking and running, you want your shoes to be about half a size bigger than the shoes that you wear the rest of the day. When you're on your feet for long periods of time when you're walking and running, your feet tend to swell. So you want about a thumbnail's width of extra length at the end of your shoe. So I mentioned, most of the training that we're going through since we're starting this at the end of January is gonna be during cold weather months. That can be a little bit tricky if you're not used to being outside during the weather. It can also be kind of daunting and make you not wanna go out and do your runs. So again, preparation is key. Make sure you have appropriate clothing for this. Keeping your hands warm, keeping your head warm can be two really important pieces in keeping the rest of your body warm. So make sure you have decent gloves and then some kind of either ear warmer or beanie to go out on your runs. When you look at the weather, make sure that you're looking at the real feel, not just the raw temperature. That's gonna make a big difference to account for wind chill and other things. When you're running, you do generate heat though. So when you look at that real feel, add about 10 degrees and then dress for that temperature. And dress in layers, that way if you get cold, you can put a long sleeve shirt on. If you get hot, you can take it off and have something underneath. And then lastly, we wanna talk about accountability. Training by yourself can be really hard. So you're gonna be more successful if you do this with a friend or a family member, somebody that you enjoy hanging out with. Find somebody, rope them into training with you, <laughs> and then tell all of your friends and family that you are training for an event. Also, very useful to actually train for an event. You can go through this training plan just to get in the habit of running and exercising, but there's some really good motivation in having that final event that you're like, okay, this is what I'm training for, this is why I'm doing it, especially on the mornings where it's hard to get out of bed. And then having that friend that's waiting for you that you know is gonna be there can be really helpful too. All right, if you want more information about the rest of the training plan and to see videos that are gonna be upcoming over the next couple of weeks, go to uthealtheasttexas.com forward slash run. And before we go, the word of the week today is fresh. I love the word fresh for a couple different reasons. We're starting this towards the beginning of the year. So you're setting yourself off with a fresh start. 
you can set the course of your year. This is not just to train for a 5K, but it's to help you develop healthy lifestyle and healthy fitness patterns that can carry on through the rest of the year. If you eat healthy, you're gonna feel better. If you hydrate well, drink plenty of water, you're gonna feel more fresh. If you're getting enough sleep, you're gonna feel refreshed. So fresh is just a really great word to think about for the week. And I'm gonna leave you with that. Stay tuned for next week.